What's going on guys, it's you here, welcome back to a brand new video. So today I'm going to show you guys my brand new custom tactics. Around two weeks ago, I ended up making a tactics video on the 451 and it was my go-to formation. It's still incredible to be fair, hit multiple rank ones in that formation and it was the for first formation that I used that I felt like I had, you know, the hang of, let's say. But I also felt like when you matched up against a five back, having one strike against the three centre backs, it weren't that great. I felt like it was so stressful trying to break down a five back formation. So I was like, I need a new formation. I need a formation that I can break down these five backs. A formation that's got two strikers as well that I can kind of ping the ball between and eventually get in behind. And I found the 4-4-2. The 4-4-2 formation is unreal. It defends exactly like last year's 4-3-2-1, but of course goes forward different in a 4-4-2. It's one of those formations that is unreal going forward and really, really solid on defense. I think this is going to be my go-to for pretty much the rest of the year, unless EA do one of those patches that somehow messes it up. But yeah, this is the team that I currently have on the RTG. We all know it's a very good team for an RTG. I'm very surprised myself that I've got this team on the RTG and I've still got a hefty amount of coins left over as well. Rewards this year have been unbelievable. So getting a team like this, of course, there's a little bit of luck involved with that, you know, Zambrot in the right back position. But overall, we've been hitting some high ranks. We got rank one on this account and rank one on the main account as well. Uh, the week that just went with this 442 formation. And yeah, we ended up getting rewarded kind of nicely with, of course, the coins and stuff. So yeah, this team, unreal. Really happy with this team on the RTG. But let's get into the tactics. Let me show you guys the code. Let me show you guys how this formation really works. The code's currently on the screen. So if you guys want to pause the video... Uh, if you're on the phone, you can zoom in. If you're not and you're on like desktop, what I will do is I'll put a code in the description so you guys can just, you know, pretty much see it from there because I know that is a little bit small. Also, one thing, don't put it in a new tactics section. Put it in the use code section. I know some people do make, do make that mistake. All right, let's get into the tactics. So build up style, balance, defense, approach, high, 70 depth. 50 depth in the 451 was perfect. 70 depth in a 4-4-2 is perfect. With this formation, you want to be more aggressive. You want to try to, you know, sprint at your opponent, but not too much. There's times that, you know, you have to calm down a little bit. But you'll notice your whole midfield, your whole attack being way more aggressive, going in for more interceptions and being kind of closer to your opponent's players. So 70 depth, 100% the way to go. Uh, when it comes down to the player role, so your goalkeeper, let me put show activity map as well. And I'll show you guys with ball, and without ball. So your goalkeeper, if your goalkeeper can play sweeper keeper, amazing. Honestly, unbelievable. If they can't, it's not the end of the world. Just have them on sweeper keeper. Also, I recommend a goalkeeper with deflector as well. Doesn't need to be the playstyle plus. As long as they got the base version, it's perfectly fine. But yeah, deflector is really good in this game. Sender backs, uh, defender. I've played ball playing defenders. I've played stopper. I feel like defender is 100% the way to go. So for sure, defender on both sender backs. Uh, fullback defend on your right back, which I know can look a little bit weird. But you, what you will notice with uh, this is the right back comes into pretty much a center back position when you have the ball. So if you guys have not, I'm pretty sure you guys have noticed, to be honest to you, you, you probably have to play like two or three games and you will notice it. If you lose the ball in the midfield in this game and you don't have one of your fullbacks on defend, massive gap between the two center backs. EA decided, let's do that. So this is how you fix it. Having your fullback, one of your fullbacks on defend pushes them into the center back position and it allows your two center backs to be much closer. So if you do end up losing the ball in the midfield, you'll notice there's not a massive gap where you can put a double deck of bus, you know, in between. All of a sudden, there's a through ball that goes straight through it. That's not the case anymore. Okay. So that's how you fix it in this game. Uh, when it comes down to the left back, wing back balance. Wing back balance is 100% the way to go for this left back position, just simply because the overlap you get is honestly unbelievable. And also, I recommend learning how to send players on runs as well. It's just tap L1. That's pretty much what it is. Uh, but yeah, wing back, definitely the way. Have a player that can go forward in this position. It doesn't need to be a Theo Hernandez. I know Theo's like 500k. It doesn't need to be this guy. For me, he's the best fullback in the game, but. If you want a little bit of a lower budget, Ferla Mendy's really good. If you ain't got that kind of budget, Alfonso. Alfonso is really, really nice as well. Uh, for the midfield, a playmaker on the left center mid, holding on the right center mid. So if I go with ball here, what you're going to notice is the right center mid is pretty much in a holding position. Not pretty much. She is in a holding position. But she's going to be that extra support that you want on defense. So you want to go forward slightly with this player, but not too much. 
all right, because you will get counter-attacked a lot and they will be up against your defensive line pretty much instantly. Left center mid. This is a very unique kind of role because they're going to help you a lot going forward, like a lot. This is your pretty much like a little cutback pass. You're going to see him on the edge of the box wide open like 90% of the time. So you want to have a player here that can go forward really well, a player that can dribble really well, and a player that has a bit of a shooting ability as well. Petri, by the way, I would recommend having a player with long ball base or plus. I know a lot of people are rolling around with Suzoko right now. Uh, so Suzoko in this kind of role, in this position, unbelievable. Would be literally perfect. Also, Toram as well. So Toram would be really nice as well. Winger on the right mid. So you'll notice, even though I've got Hansen, I haven't got her on inside forward, even though she can play that like role. I have on winger. So what you will see is when you match up against a five back or, of course, a four back, right? Uh, you'll notice their fullback pretty much go out to Hansen, leaving a massive gap in between the fullback and the center back. And that's when you give it to your right striker and you go for maybe a little speed boost or you go for a little through ball in behind there. That's a way of getting past defensive lines very easily. So it's very important to uh, have your right mid on winger. You can switch it if you want to, but I would recommend like switch it to the other side. But I would recommend also switching your wing back over to your right back and having your left back on a full back defend. So you can switch this completely around if you want to, but I would recommend it like this. Uh, with your left mid, you want to have inside forward balance. The reason I've not got inside forward attack is because what you'll notice when going forward, or sorry, when uh, you lose the ball, uh, you'll notice the player come back on defense and help out your left back, especially with your left back being on wing back. You need a bit more of that, you know, defensive structure. So having it on attack will just pretty much have them up there the entire time. Having it on balance will allow them to come back and help out on defense. With the two strikers, advance forward. I've seen a lot of people have false nine, advance forward, and also poacher and advance forward it is nice as well i don't mind like that kind of duo let's say but i like advance forward on both of these players if you can have a player with advance forward plus doesn't need to be plus plus but just straight up plus that would be nice like one of them you don't need to have both of them you guys can see i'm using a dharma triore and a dharma triore does not have advance forward plus he doesn't he can just play the role he can just play the position let's say so uh, yeah, if you can have one of them, that's incredible because some of the plays you can do between these two, some of the movement you'll see from a player with advanced forward plus plus as well is nuts. You do definitely notice the difference when they can actually play the role really, really well. Uh, also, there's a few other things that you can do in this formation. Like for example, you can have Petri, the right center mid on a box to box. I've seen a few people have that in a 4-4-2. Again, the reason I don't personally have it is simply because I feel like when you lose the ball in the midfield, you'll notice that a counter-attack can happen very, very easily in this 4-4-2. So having that little, you know, extra defensive structure is really, really nice. So I also want to show you a few plays that you can do in this 4-4-2 formation. So all these clips are from my recent weekend league that I ended up hitting rank one in. And you guys can see Fio Hernandez is already getting involved with his wing back role. Uh, Petri over to Hansen. Hansen once again uh, separating or let's say spreading the defensive line so we can have some uh, more options in the midfield. Little one, two, green. Very simple with Hansen. This right here is the, is the play that is very good in this game that you can do with two strikers but you can't really do with only one striker up there unless you've got a cam actually like let's say you're playing a 4-4-1-1 you can give it into your cam send your striker in behind and then go for a first line through ball that also works really well but it was really hard to me to do that in a 4-5-1 but it works of course really well in a 4-4-2 because we've got the two strikers to work with son of course with his you know finesse shot being incredible there I went in behind the two uh, players there. Adama Traore, even though I saw Hansen overlap, we all know how good Trevellas are in this game. So I went for it and Adama Traore, being Adama, slots it in. Something that's also very good, you guys can see, is the Power Shot Plus. So you guys can see there that I've got Kuehl. I wanted to pick up Kuehl for the weekend because one, it helps out with chemistry. And also, I wanted to try him. I I've been using Salma, like you saw at the start. And I feel like Salma's great and all, but... She gets bodied very easily. That's something I also noticed where I just feel like I'm losing the ball way too easy when I'm running down the line with her. So I picked up Kuehl for the weekend league just to see how good he would be. And he was really, really solid. Once again, Porteas running inside the box. I miss timing a lot of these shots, I must admit. But Porteas slots it. So you see there with Petri, even though she's on holding defend, she's still giving me that option. She's still going forward. That's why if you can have a player in that type of role, in that position, with uh with a little bit of a long shot ability amazing again petri i would say is definitely up there as like 
one of the best players for that role just because she's got pretty much everything. Long ball plus, uh, a bit of pace about her, good defensively. Just she is the best player that I have used in that role so far. I'm waiting for a promo card. Like there's so many Barca players that already got a, uh, a special card in this game. Like uh, Hansen, Porteus. I'm waiting for Petri to get it. EA, do it soon. Also, Bon Matty got a card as well. Adama Traore in behind. A nice little green Traveller. Once again, doing a little flick on with uh, with Sonde. Adama over to Hansen. Because she's on winger, she makes more of a wide run. And then if I want her to come inside, there's times that I do like a player lock so I can get in behind like that. Or she'll actually do it automatically. That's what I mean. Like Even though she's on winger, she doesn't like fully stay out wide. There's times that she kind of acts like an inside forward as well. But it's more, of course, as a winger, like 80% of the time. But you'll see her make some really, really good runs. Uh, Son in behind to kill. I went for a first time power shot. And again, power shot plus being power shot plus. It's extremely OP in this game. First time through ball from Adama over to Son. You would expect that pass not to work because it's Adama Traore. And as I said... The passing can sometimes a little bit dodge, can be a little bit dodgy, but Adama can do it, clearly. Uh, Adama, once again, over to Hansen, keeping the whip there and making a nice run over to Son. I go down the line here, trying to see what I have. Uh, something I do recommend is if you are in that position, do a ball roll. Not a ball roll outside, so you're away from the defenders. Ball roll to the inside. So what you'll notice when you do that is uh, the goalkeeper actually leaves. For some of the reason, it's coded in the game. The goalkeeper leaves its near, his near post wide open. Don't know why it's a thing this year, I'll be honest to you. It was not a thing last year where the goalkeeper stepped away. Even though the person's not moving a the keeper, they automatically step away from near post. And then you have a wide open shot. If you green it, it's pretty much like a guaranteed goal. Son with the ball once again. Nice touchdown. Uh, this was actually a really good opponent, by the way. That I remember that game. He was a rank one player. Yeah, he was really, really good. That was like one of the best opponents that I, uh, that I played this entire year. The 5-2 scoreline did 100% not do him justice because that, that guy was 100% a rank one, top 200 elite division player. But yeah, you guys can see we ended up hitting a nice little rank one. So yeah, we got rank one on both accounts. The rewards is out. So if you guys want to check out the rewards, it will be uh, in the description. If you guys do like the 4-4-2 tactics that I've given you guys today, make sure to leave a like, make sure to subscribe, and let me know how it goes in the comment section. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.